Hey, I'm Mandy from Deep Lizard. In this episode, we'll go through all the necessary image preparation and processing steps needed to train our first convolutional neural network. Our goal over the next few episodes will be to build and train a convolutional neural network that can classify images as cats or dogs. The first thing that we need to do is get and prepare our data set for which we'll be training our model. We're going to work with the data set from the Kaggle Cats vs. Dogs competition, and you can find a link to download the data set in the corresponding blog for this episode on deeplizard.com. So we're mostly going to organize our data on disk programmatically, but there's a couple of manual steps that we'll go through first. So after you've downloaded the data set from Kaggle, you will have this zip folder here. And if we look inside, then this is the contents. We have a zipped train folder and a zipped test folder along with the sample submission CSV. So we actually are not going to be working with this or this. So you can delete the test zip as well as the CSV file. We're going to only be working with this train zip. So we want to extract the high level cats versus or dogs versus cat zip first and then extract the train zip. So because that takes a while, I went ahead and did that here. So now I have just this train directory because I moved the test directory elsewhere and deleted the CSV file. So now I have this extracted train folder and I go in here and I have a nested train folder. As you can see, I'm already in train once. Now I'm in train again. And in here we have all of these images of cats and dogs. Okay, so that is the way that the data will come downloaded. The first step, or the next step that we need to do now is to come into here and grab all of these uh, images. And we're going to control X or cut all of these and bring them up to the first train directory. So we don't want this nested uh, directory structure. Instead, we're going to place them directly within the first train directory. All right, now all of our images have been copied into our base train directory here. So this nested train directory that the images previously belonged to is now empty. So we can just go ahead and delete this one. All right, so now our directory structure is just this uh, dogs versus cat uh, top directory. Within we have a train directory, and then we have all of the images within our train directory, both of cats and dogs. The last step is to just move the dogs versus cats directory that has all of the data in it to be in the place on disk where you're going to be working. So for me, I am in uh, relative to my Jupyter notebook, I am within a directory called data and I have placed dogs versus cats here. All right, so that's it for the manual labor. Now everything else that we'll do to organize the data and then later process the data will be programmatically through code. All right, so we're now here within our Jupyter Notebook, and first things first, we need to import all of the packages that we'll be making use of. And all of the packages here are not just for this specific episode on processing the image data, but actually these are all of the packages that we'll be making use of over the next several episodes as we're working with CNNs. All right, so we'll get that taken care of. And now uh, just this cell here is making sure if we are using a GPU that TensorFlow is able to identify it correctly and we are en enabling memory growth on the GPU as well. If you're not using a GPU, then no worries. As mentioned earlier, you are completely fine to follow this course with a CPU only. All right, so now we're going to pick back up with organizing our data on disk. So assuming that we've gone through the first steps from the beginning of this episode, we're now going to organize the data into train valid and test DIRs, which correspond to our training validation and test sets. So this script here is going to first change directories into our dog versus cat directory. And then it's going to check to make sure that the directory structure that we're about to make does not already exist. And if it doesn't, it's going to proceed with the rest of this script. So the first thing that it's doing, as long as the directory structure is not already in place, is making the following directories. So we already have a train directory, so it's going to make a nested dog and cat directory within train. 
And then additionally, it's going to make a valid directory that contains dog and cat directories and a test directory, which also contains dog and cat directories. Now, this particular data set contains 25,000 images of dogs and cats, and that is pretty much overkill for the tasks that we will be using these images for uh, in the upcoming episodes. We're actually only going to use a small subset of this data. You're free to work with all the data if you'd like, but it would take a lot longer to train our networks and work with the data in general if we were using the entire set of it. So we are going to be working with a subset consisting of 1,000 images in our training set, 200 in our validation set and 100 in our test set. And each of those sets are going to be split evenly among cats and dogs. So that's exactly what this block of code here is doing. It's going into the images that are in our dogs versus cat directory and moving 500, uh, randomly moving 500 cat images into our trained cat directory, 500 dog images into our trained dog directory. And then similarly doing the same thing for our valid, uh, our valid, our validation set, uh, both for cat and dogs, and then our test set, both for cat and dogs, with just these quantities differing regarding the amount set I stated earlier for each of the sets. And we're able to understand which images are cats and which are dogs based on the names of the files. So if you saw earlier, the cat images actually had the word cat at, uh, in the file names, and then the dog images had the word dog in the file names. So that's how we're able to select dog images and cat images here with this script. All right, so after this script runs, we can pull up our uh, file explorer and look at the directory structure and make sure it is what we expect. So we have our dogs versus cat directory within our data directory here. So if we enter, then we have test, train, and valid directories. Inside test, we have cat that has cat uh, images. And inside dog, we have dog images. If we back out and go to train, we can see similarly. And if we go into valid, we can see similarly. And you can select uh, one of the folders and look at the properties to to see how many files exist within the directory to make sure that is it is the amount that we chose to put in from our script and that we didn't accidentally make any type of error. So if we go back to the dogs versus cats, the root directory here, you can see we have all of these cat and dog images left over. Uh, these were the remaining uh, 23,000 or so that were left over after we moved our subset into our train valid and test directories. So you're free to make use of these in any way that you want or delete them or move them to another location. All of what we'll be working with are in these three directories here. All right, so at this point we have obtained the data and we have organized the data. Now it's time to move on to processing the data. So if we scroll down, first we are just creating these variables here where we have assigned our train valid and test paths. So this is just pointing to the location on disk where our uh, different data sets reside. Now recall earlier in the course we talked about that whenever we train a model that we need to put the data into a format that the model expects. And we know that when we train a Keras sequential model that the model receives the data whenever we call the fit function. So we are going to put our images into the format of a Keras generator. And we're doing that in this cell here. We're creating these train, valid, and test batches and setting them equal to image data generator dot flow from directory, which is going to return a directory iterator. Basically, it's going to create batches of data from the directories where our data sets reside. And these batches of data will be able to be passed to the sequential model using the fit function. So now let's look exactly at how we are defining these variables. So let's focus just on train batches for now. So we're setting train batches equal to image data generator dot flow from directory. But first to image data generator, we are specifying this pre-processing function and setting that equal to tf.keras.applications.vgg16.preprocessInput. So 
I'm just going to tell you for now that this is a function that is going to apply some type of pre-processing on the images before they get passed to the network that we'll be using. And we're processing them in such a way that is equivalent to the way that a uh, very popular model known as VGG16, we're processing our images in the same format as which images that get passed to this VGG16 model are processed. And we're going to talk about more about this in a future episode, so don't let it confuse you now. Just know that this is causing some type of processing to occur on our images, and we'll talk more about it in a future episode and not stress on it now because it's not necessarily very important for us right at this moment, the technical details of that at least. So besides that, when we call flow from directory, this is where we are passing in our actual data and specifying uh, how we want this data to be processed. So we are setting di directory equal to train path, which up here we defined the location on disk where our training set was under the train path variable. And then we're setting target size equal to 224 by 224. So this is the height and width that we want the cat and dog images to be resized to. So if you're working with an image data set that has images of varying sizes, or you just want to scale them up or scale them down, this is how you can specify that to happen. And this will resize all images in your data set to be of this height and width before passing them to our network. Now we are specifying our classes, which are just the classes for um, the potential uh, labels of our data set, so cat or dog. And we are setting our batch size to 10. We do the exact same thing for the validation set and the test set. Everything is the exact same for both of them, except for where each of these sets live on disk as being uh, specified here under the uh, directory parameter. And then the only other difference is here for our test batches, we are specifying this shuffle equals false parameter. Now, this is because whenever we use our test batches later for inference to get our model to predict on images of cats and dogs after training and validation has been completed, we're going to want to look at our prediction results in a confusion matrix like we did in a previous video for a separate data set. And in order to do that, we need to be able to access the unshuffled labels for our test set. So that's why we set shuffle equals false for only this set. For both validation and training sets, we do want the data sets to be shuffled. All right, so we run this and we get the output of found 1,000 images belonging to two classes, and that is corresponding to our train batches. Found 200 images belonging to two classes, which corresponds to val valid batches, and then the 100 belonging to two classes corresponding to our test batches. So that is the output that you want to see for yourself. That's letting you know that it found the images on disk that belong to both the cat and dog uh, classes that you have specified here. So if you are not getting this at this point, if you get found zero images, then perhaps you're pointing to the wrong place on disk. Uh, you just need to make sure that it's able to find all the images that you set up previously. Right, and here we are just verifying that that is indeed the case. Now, next, we are going to just grab a single batch of images and the corresponding labels from our train batches. And remember, our batch size is 10, so this should be 10 images along with the 10 corresponding labels. Next, we're introducing this function plot images that we're going to use to plot the images from our train batches that we just obtained above. And this function is directly from TensorFlow's website, so check the link in the corresponding blog for this episode on deepblizzard.com to see uh, to be able to get to TensorFlow's site where exactly I pulled this off of. So we will define this function here. All right, so now we're just going to use this function to plot our uh, images from our test batches here, and we're going to print the corresponding labels for those images. So if we scroll down, we can see this is what a batch of training data looks like. So this might be a little bit different than what you expected, given the fact that it looks like the color data has been a little bit distorted. And that's due to the pre-processing function that we called to pre-process the images in such a way that 
um, in the same type of way that images get pre-processed for the famous BGG16 model. So like I said, we're going to discuss in detail um, what exactly that pre-processing function is doing technically, as well as why we're using it in a later video. But for now, just know that it's skewing the RGB data in some way. So we can still make out the fact that this is a cat and this looks like a cat. This is a dog, 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 cat. Yeah, so we can still kind of generally make out what these images are, but the color data is skewed. But don't worry too much about the technical details behind that for right now. Just know that this is what the data looks like before we pass it to the model. And here are the corresponding labels for the data. So we have um, these one hot encoded vectors that uh, represent either cat or dog. So a one zero represents a cat and a zero one represents a dog. Okay, so I guess I was wrong earlier with thinking that this one was a dog. This one is a cat because as we can see, it maps to the uh, one zero one hot encoding. And if you don't know what I mean by one hot encoding, then check out the corresponding video for that in the deep learning fundamentals course on deeplizard.com. But yeah, we can see that zero one is the vector used to represent the label of a dog. So this one's a dog and the next two are dogs as well. This one and this one. Now, just a quick note about everything that we've discussed up to this point. Sometimes we do not have the corresponding labels for our test set. So in the examples that we've done so far in this course, we've always had the corresponding labels for our test set. But uh, in practice, a lot of times you may not have those labels. And in fact, if we were to have used the downloaded test directory that came from the Kaggle uh, download, then we would see that that test directory does not have the images labeled with cat or dog. So in this case, we do have the uh, test labels for the cat and dog images since we pulled them from the original training set from Kaggle that did have the corresponding labels. But if you don't have access to the test labels and you are wondering how to process your test data accordingly, then check the blog for this episode on deepblister.com. I have a section there that demonstrates what you need to do differently from what we showed in this video if you do not have access to the labels for your test set. All right, so now we have obtained our image data, organized it on disk, and processed it accordingly for our convolutional neural network. So now in the next episode, we are going to get set up to start building and training our first CNN. By the way, we are currently in Vietnam filming this episode. If you didn't know, we also have a vlog channel where we document our travels and share a little bit more about ourselves. So check that out at Deep Lizard Vlog on YouTube. Also, be sure to check out the corresponding blog for this episode, along with other resources available on deeplizard.com. And check out the Deep Lizard Hive Mind, where you can gain exclusive access to perks and rewards. Thanks for contributing to Collective Intelligence. I'll see you next time.